Welcome everybody to the Disability and Jesus Sunday service on this third Sunday of Trinity and this last weekend in June is always a time when we think about those who are usually to be ordained around this time of year. We think about those whose ordinations have been deferred for some weeks or some months because of the lockdown and we ask God to reveal to us the ways in which he is calling us in our own lives to exercise our discipleship and our vocation in him and for him. We pray for one another and we pray that together, apart, we may listen for God's word to us and offer him our prayer, our praise and our worship this day. You are very, very welcome to be joining with us. time of prayer and intercession, a time to be honest with God. Let's pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then be open and honest and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Words of forgiveness and release. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, Teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St Matthew. Chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, receives a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person, will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this passage, in this conversation, this snippet where Jesus is talking to the disciples, but in the hearing of others, there is an assumption and an assertion. The assumption is about welcome. Jesus assumes that there will be welcome and goes on to the assertion that to welcome another is to welcome him, and to welcome him is therefore to welcome God. If I said to you, look, to welcome me is to welcome God, you'd say that's a pretty big assertion, isn't it? I mean, come on, you know, don't think too highly of yourself, pride's a sin. So it's a wild assertion to make, but Jesus can make that because he is the son of man, he is the son of God, he is the Messiah long awaited for. So Jesus says, when you welcome another person, you welcome Jesus, and in doing so, you welcome God. So next time you say to somebody, you're very welcome, 
Look into their eyes and see the eyes of God looking back. It may just challenge you into the depth of welcome. <laughs> Do you really mean it? Do they really feel it? Which brings us on to the first bit, the assumption of welcome. You see, if God actually turned up in person, we would surely bend over backwards and make sure that everything was right, that the welcome was genuine, that the words were correct, that the space was the best it could be, that we were on our best behavior. If we knew we were coming, probably brush our hair and put on our best bib and tucker. So take it back the other way. God is saying to welcome him is to be welcomed by Jesus. To be welcomed by Jesus is to be welcoming an individual, which means that every single individual potentially is the person of God. Or if we're all made in his image, is God. We should be welcoming every single individual because they are God. I don't mean that in a heretical sense. I mean God's presence stands right in front of us with every single human being we face. If you notice, Jesus talks about gifts and skills, not about types of people. He doesn't say whoever welcomes a black person as a black person receives a black person's reward. He doesn't say whoever welcomes a disabled person as a disabled person welcomes a disabled person's reward. To be honest, from my point of view, that's probably a good job. I don't want welcoming like a disabled person. <laughs> I've seen too many of those go horribly wrong in church buildings and other places. He doesn't say about welcoming what's on the face of somebody, the appearance that we first look at and observe. He doesn't say welcome based on your judgmental attitude. He says welcome gifts. Gifts are from God, right? Gifts are freely and generously given without, without a receipt or an invoice. And he talks about the gifts that people have. Welcome the gifted. And everybody has gifts. One of the things that disability and Jesus wrestles with fairly publicly on many occasions is the word welcome. Everybody welcome. And banners outside buildings, not just churches, say welcome. And you want to say, how welcome am I? Am I welcome enough to step over the doorstep if I can get into it with my wheels, my crutches, my guide dog or my long white cane? Am I welcome to come in and have an opinion? Am I welcome to come in and simply change things by being present? Because a person walking into a new space is a catalyst for change, simply by being present. Am I welcome to have opinions? Am I welcome to question things? Am I welcome to take part? Am I welcome to be included in what happens here? Am I welcome to belong? Jesus says, there is welcome. And with that welcome brings the opportunity for inclusion and belonging and therefore change. And I'm not sure we're very good at acting on a welcome. Even if we kind of know the theology is when I welcome you, I welcome Jesus. Still not convinced we actually do that. I'm fairly convinced we still find reasons why it's not possible to go beyond the word welcome to the belonging of true welcome. So here's my challenge for you and for all of us. When we say you are welcome to come to my church, you are welcome to belong to this relationship, you are welcome to be part of what we're doing. Do we really mean that? Or do we mean come and see what we do, but don't change how we do it? come and see how we are but don't ask us why <laughs> come and observe but don't participate to do that is utterly wrong because if we did that to jesus he'd be furious oh yes jesus come on in through the church door but don't change anything hang on i've got a funny feeling we do that already jesus said anyone who is welcomed is welcomed as me and I am welcomed as God. Which means if we're willing to turn people away or reject them or have them bounce off in a different direction, then we're taking a humongous risk that we're not doing the same thing to God. Our churches might be safer without God, talking about him without him, but they wouldn't be church. If 
we don't include everybody, if everybody doesn't belong in a safe Christian Jesus environment, then we are not the church. Something to ponder as you go about your day. Amen. At this time of year when traditionally the church would be ordaining its new priests and deacons, and despite the fact that that's been put on hold for a short time in most places because of the COVID-19 lockdown, it's still the traditional time of year when we pray for people in their vocations and ministries of all kinds, lay and ordained, uh, authorised ministries within the church structures and ministry in daily life. And this season, when we pray for that, uh, is called Ember Tide, and it occurs at a few different points in the year, but this is one of them. So today we're going to use the intercessions for Ember Tide, which are to be found in Common Worship, Times and Seasons, published by the Archbishop's Council. We pray for God's gifts to his church, saying, Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, hear us. God our Father, you give us gifts that we may work together in the service of your Son. Bless the leaders of your church, that they may be firm in faith and humble before you. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those who teach, that they may increase our understanding and be open to your word for them. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those who minister healing, that they may bring wholeness to others, yet know your healing in themselves. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those through whom you speak, that they may proclaim your word in power, yet open their ears to your gentle whisper. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those who work in your world today, that in the complexity of their daily lives, they may live for you, fulfill your purposes, and seek your kingdom first. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those who are uncertain of their gifts and those who are powerless in the world's eyes, that they may be made strong in your gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, Lord of your church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven Hallowed be your name Your kingdom come Your will be done On earth as in heaven Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins As we forgive those Who sin against us Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. A final word of blessing as we close our formal worship today. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.